Okay, I'm just setting up the recording. All right. So, this is uh, my terminal. Can you all see this reasonably well? I can't get it that much bigger, bigger and still have it be functional. So, I already have Hugo installed on my computer. If you don't have Hugo installed, look at the previous video to figure out how to do that. And so once you have that installed, you have a Hugo command that you can run to, to automate some certain practices for you. So you can create a new site in your Hugo, and I'm going to create a Jamstack Boston site. And what that does is if I look at my desktop, it creates a directory, Jamstack Boston, and inside that directory, there's a bunch of files. If you're interested in more about what each of these folders and files does, check the, check the previous video out. And from here, okay, see if I can fit everything in here. We can take a look at our directory structure here. And what I'm gonna look at first is this config.toml file. So this is the main site configuration file. It's basically key value pairs. If you're not familiar with TOML and you're more familiar with YAML, like probably a lot of folks are, you can actually change this to just be a YAML file. So I'm going to do that right now, config.yaml. And if we take a look at the config YAML file, we just have to change the syntax here. So this is TOML syntax. Just change this over to YAML syntax. And you have a site running off the config YAML file. And we can actually, right now we can go and we can start up our web server and the D flag basically allows us to see any drafts that we have. So you can have published and unpublished con content. It's a concept that Hugo has. If we, if we start that up, oh, I gotta move into this and we'll run our web server and we'll open it up. So it's a blank page and this is something I talked about in the past. So out of the box, Hugo does not come with any helpful context about what's going on in your site. So it doesn't have any content created by default and it doesn't have any layouts created by default. These things are needed in order to actually render something on your site. So a lot of people will download a theme to begin with, but I wanna kind of go through like creating templates from scratch and how the system works. So if you wanna get running real quick, the easiest thing to do is to create a list.html file inside your layouts folder. And if we take a look at that and I just type hello here and I save that, I actually want to hide this. Oh man, you can't see it on your screen, but this, the little screen sharing things in, in the way of, of what I'm trying to type. And really re reload the page. You can see that the hello is now being rendered here. So this gets into the first major concept of the Hugo templating. So there's, there's two main templates you have to worry about. There's a list.html template, and then there's a single.html template. And the way I like to think about this is most sites in most sections of a site have aggregate pages and single node pages. So for instance, if you're looking at a bunch of blog posts, the aggregate page would be the page that lists all the blog posts out. And then the single page would be if you click into any of those blog posts, you see the actual content for that page. So Hugo by default likes to think of the home page as an aggregate page because oftentimes home pages will have a bunch of different links out to different sections on the, on the site. And something like an about page or a contact page would be a single page. So since it's the home page, it's the, the forward slash on the, on the site, there's no actual URL there besides the base URL. It is looking to the list template to render that content. So one thing we can do in here is we could actually start templating using some of the, um, the variables available to us. So if I start typing some HTML here and I'm in my title section, I can actually start using variables using this kind of handlebar syntax. And it's, this might be similar to a lot of other templating languages that you've seen. It's, it's similar to like liquid templating. This is actually Go templates. So it's a little bit different in the way that it, it treats like variables and context. So everything is, comes out of this, this basic dot context and it's different depending on the template that you're in and the control structure, structure that you're in. So for instance, the context that we're in right now in this page template is a little bit different than the context would be, for instance, if we were inside of a for loop. The context inside of a for loop would be for that individual item that we're looping over. This will become a little more clear. So for instance, we have a context available to us called the site context, and we can get a title from that. And what this refers to is 
in our config file here, if we were to switch over to this, this is our site-wide configuration. So it's the site-wide context. And in that context, we have this key here, this title key, and it has the value of new Hugo site. So in our list page, if we look back over there, we are getting the site context and then we're getting the title. And, and note that this capital is important. I think it has something to do with the way that Go, the Go language exports variables. So you just have to keep in mind to actually capitalize those variables so you can access them. But if we were to save this, if we were to save this, and we were to switch back here, you'll notice that this now has the my uh, Hugo site at the top in this tab. So that's the title attribute on the page. And for instance, we come into our config file here, our config top file, and we could change this to be Jamstack Boston. We could save that and this should change. Yeah, so you can, you can see how those variables work there. So now what happens if we you know, have individual pages and we want those individual page variables? Well, that's not super hard to create. So we can come into our content folder and we can actually create a specially named file. So if we create an underscore index dot markdown file, we can start adding page content. So in Hugo, there's a concept of front matter. It's very similar to Jekyll or other static site generators. So front matter is like the key value pairings at the top of uh, a page. And then there's regular markdown that can be written below there. When I'm creating sites, I typically spend a lot more time in the front matter than I do in the actual unstructured markdown below it. Just because you can do more powerful things like putting those variables in specific places on your templates. So the way that you'd start you can actually do a couple different things in Hugo. If you were doing Toml front matter, you would create something that looks like this. Since we're using Jekyll, you actually just change the syntax a little bit and you do three minus signs like that. And now we have Jekyll front matter. And actually, let's just call this uh, home page with a lot of ease to, so we know that we made it. So we just created an index.markdown file for our home page. It's a special name file. We added some front matter, we gave it a, a title key, and now we're able to actually come into our list template here, and we should be able to go and start creating some markup with that file. So I'm gonna create an H1 tag, and I'm going to say, give me the page context now, and give me the title from the page. So note the small difference here. So we were in the site context before, getting the, the overall site configuration. Now we're in the page context, and we're getting the title from that individual page. If we come back here, you see it live reloads for us. Hugo has that built in. And we have the title added to our page. So an interesting thing that we can do here is actually since this page context, we're in this, this page template, we actually don't need to specify this piece of context. We could actually get rid of that and save that here. And it will still work. So that's just a, a little shortcut for you if you want to save a little bit of time. So we can do a couple things here. We can actually add a bunch more pages, except we're gonna run into some issues if we leave the templates the way they are right now. So we only have a listing page template, but we don't have any single page templates. So let's just show what that looks like real quick. So if I add a new child node here and I call this about.markdown, and I add another one here and I call it contact.markdown. And we can do, let's, um, Let's actually try to print these pages. So let's do a range over pages. And let's, let's print the title of each page. And let's end. Now, curious if I have my syntax right there. We'll find out pretty, qu pretty quickly. So what I'm trying to do here, unsuccessfully, um, is I want to loop over all the pages in the site and I want to print out the current page title for that. Oh, and actually the reason is, so I haven't actually added any page titles here. So let's, let's do that real quick. In our about page, we're going to add a title and call this about. Save that. In our contact page, we're going to come here. We're going to add a title called contact. And we'll save that. And if we come back over here, okay. So you can see that these, these are being printed to the page now. So what we're doing in that template 
this list template here, is we're going all over all the pages in the site, and we're printing out the, the context has changed, right? So no longer does this refer to the page that we're on title. It refers to the, the title of the page that we're looping through. And we can, then we can go and print that out to the page. So for instance, if we want this to be a little bit more useful for something like navigation, we could create an unordered list. We could create a list of them. And we could create something like an anchor tag here as an href to the base URL. Uh, nope, it's the permalink, I believe. And let's just close that off. It's a little hard to type in this small thing here, but we could do that. And then we could come in, we could grab this title here and put that as the actual link text. So we'll put it inside our anchor tag. Oops. Put that there, save that. We probably want our unordered list to be declared outside of our for loop here. And now we have navigation to those individual pages. So we can click on these. They're going to error out because we don't have templates to render them. Right? So we, we go here. We don't have a template for an about page. We don't have a template for a contact page. Let me just show how to do that real quick, and then we'll, we'll kind of recap what we've done here um, and leave a little time for questions. So one of the things we can do inside our layouts folder here is we can create another folder called default, underscore default. And this is a special name folder. And if we put our list template and our single template in there, every type of content that we create after this, so if we create news content or events content or blog posts, those are all different structured content. They will all default back to this default template um, folder. So if they don't have, find their individual templates, if there's not a specific blog template, or there's not a specific event template, it'll go back to this template right here. So let's just do that real quick. I'm gonna move this to that default folder. And I'm also going to add another child node here called single.html. And I'm going to edit this. I'm going to add some HTML. And I'm just going to say, which one? This is a single page. OK, so save that. If we reload this. We go to this, so now you can see that these templates are starting to come together in a way that, that makes a little bit of sense. So just to kind of go over what we, what we talked about here again, because I know it's kind of quick and it's on a, a small screen, but essentially we have two concepts. So we have content and we have layouts. One layout can feed many content pages. And the idea there is like, if you're creating a, a blog post, right? You don't want to create the structure of that blog post every time. You want the content to be different. The titles are going to be different. The dates are going to be different. The pictures are going to be different, but the structure might be very similar. So you could create a content type and define a specific layout for that in your layouts folder. And then you could create many markdown files in your content folder and then use those variables to actually populate the templates that you're creating through the, the Hugo generator. Does that generally make sense to folks? Yeah? Okay, so we have six minutes here before I'm going to turn it over to, to these guys for the future presentation. Does anyone have any questions or want me to go over anything in more detail here before we move on? Yes. Yeah, so, so in this case, this is a very simple example of just a simple static site generator, which is, is essentially GitHub would be your database, right? So you'd have all these static files and they would be in your content folder. And then, you know, there's not a smart way to, to create this site for non-technical users, right? You have to create this through Markdown and text and things like that. If you want more sophisticated solutions, you know, these guys will talk a little bit more about ways to do that for non-technical people. Um, but uh, in this case, it's just a simple static site generator. So those, that content has to be created and then compiled locally and then served up somewhere. Um, unless you're running like continuous integration on a server somewhere, you know, you can, you can have that compile it for you, but essentially you're creating that content locally like that. Yes. Exactly. And there's a couple different ways to do this. And I, you know, I think I'm going to do another templating section because there's a lot more I want to cover. So there's a couple concepts here and I can just do one real quick. For instance, um, 
you can, there's a couple of defined, predefined front matter variables. So you could do a slug like call it um, a boot, save that. If we come back over here and we were to click into this, you can see that this slug has changed. So that's not the whole story. So there's, there's a concept of slug and there's a concept of URL. So slug is basically, if these were in a subfolder and I was gonna show how to do it and maybe next month I'll, I'll talk about that. So if we put these in a folder called pages, if you were to click into this, it, the URL would say forward slash pages forward slash a boot. So the slug only changes the end part of it. You can use something called URL and that will change the whole path there. So for instance, if you had something like a subdirectory for these and you wanted to have them still appear as like normal pages, but you want to organize them a little more because you know, certain sites have thousands of pages. And if you have many content types, I don't like the idea of having you know, all my pages in my content type folders all kind of mixed in by alphabetical order. It seems like a mess. So I'd like them all to like basic pages are in one folder, events are in one, blog posts, and you have them all in these like standard folder structure, but you can still have them look like a normal like uh, top level page by changing the, the URL. So this, if I save this, it's not gonna look any different because we don't have a subfolder, but you can do it that way. Um, and next month, I'll also talk about setting up uh, patterns for certain types of content. So for instance, you could say, I want all pages to be at the top level and you can set a, a pattern in your config.yaml or toml, whatever your config file's name, you can set it there so every content type gets that pattern by default. So it says like, oh, convert the file name into a slug or the title into a slug and then use that as the, the title. And I'll show how to go over that um, next month. Thanks, yeah. Anybody else? We have time for maybe one more question, yeah. So this is where Hugo has some nuance and I wish I had more time to go into it. So you, you have to use a, the concept of list and single HTML. So about will not know anything about how to render that specific page unless you explicitly make that connection through the front matter. You can like, you can specify, a, I, I think it's called layout. And actually you should go to this page front matter on Hugo. Oh, um, this front matter page will, will tell you all the predefined key values that you can put in there. I believe one of them is layout. And so you could spe specify a layout.html uh, file and you could specify that specifically, but it's not gonna know to look to that specifically. So if outside of your, your layout folder here, if you want that about page to have a specific page layout, page layouts have a specific naming convention. You put it in a folder called page. And then if you put single.html inside of page, it will render it automatically. And for instance, if you had blog posts and we didn't have a time to, to cover this, say we made a, a blog post content type, if you wanted a specific one that's not default, you would say, for instance, if we called it posts in here, if we had a, a subfolder in content that said posts, all those would be rendered by a subfolder in layouts called posts. And again, it would look to single and list.html. That make sense? Okay, one last question. Exactly, so there is, there is a way to do that. So I'll just quickly show how to do that. Um, so since we don't have any other content types, this is gonna be underwhelming, but you would do it like this. You'd say with pages, and the syntax is a little funny, you would say type capital T, and then I believe the default here is page, but it'd basically be your content type. So if you had posts, it would be posts um, in this, la this last bit here, right? So you're basically saying, give me a range of all the pages with the type page. So if I save this, it, if it's not, if I didn't break it by having that default name incorrect, um, sorry that the little sharing is right in my way. I can't actually click on my, oh, I, I broke it here. So range with pages type. I'm not sure what the default page type is. I thought it was page. I, I seem to have messed up something. It would be very close to that syntax there. Yeah. Um, instead of like how it's grouped by folder. Sure, you, well, you can define a type inside of your front matter here. So you don't have to, you can override the folders that they're in. You could consolidate things by the type in the front matter. So you could do something like that. And you can actually do it by other front matter as well. So you don't have to do it by type. You can do it by a lot of, you're right. You can do it by a lot of different front matter. Just fix the syntax. We don't have time to fix it today, right now. Um, we got to turn it over to these guys, but it, it's close to that. I messed up something there. Maybe somebody in the audience knows what I messed up. No? Okay. Okay, let's, uh, let's turn it over to these guys. Let's give them a big round of applause coming up from New York City to come talk to us.
might have been it might have been pages. I, I, yeah. It's it's possible. I yeah, I don't know. Okay, so Yeah, let's whatever you prefer. Scott this one. 